and welcome to Crochet Moments. This is episode 57. I'm Helen and this is my place where I like to talk about all things yarn. I knit, I crochet, I'm definitely self-describing, self-identifying, that's the phrase I'm looking for, as a, <laughs> stash, a yarn stash hoarder. And um, yeah, so this is my little YouTube channel, emphasis on the word little. Um, but I would like to say hello, um, properly hello, to all of my new subscribers. I did mean to say that in my last podcast, but I completely forgot because I have Emily with me and she can be a bit of a distraction. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've hit 300 subscribers, 301 to be precise. Um, while it's a very small pickings for some um, channels, for me it's a good number um, and I have a really lovely group of subscribers um, that I regularly am in contact with. Um, I would like to say, um, for um, I don't know if I should be saying this out here on my podcast, but Sofferty, long time subscriber, has been poorly. Um, so that's why she's been absent from the comments. So um, if you are watching at the moment, Sofferty, I'm send we're sending you all our love because um, you have been just a rock <laughs> from the very beginning. You've been great with all of your subs um, suggestions and also um, your interaction with the other subscribers in my comments below. So I really, really do hope you're feeling better soon um, and well enough to, and I, and I hope you're getting lots of time to be knitting, uh, to crochet. You're mostly a crochet. So yeah, anyway. This is episode 57. I do try to post an episode every two weeks. This is slightly late. I've had a busy weekend. Uh, so Friday is the night I usually film, ready for it to go live on the Sunday. And um, Friday, I ended up having to do bedtime for Emily. So, uh, and take Catherine to go guys. So I had no time really for doing that. Also, I'd had a very busy day at work. I was tired, I just wanted to Pour myself a drink and go to sleep. <laughs> um, so what have I been doing the last couple of weeks? Well, um, this weekend just gone was Chinese Lunar New Year. So if you do celebrate, happy Lunar New Year. It is now the year of the rabbit, the water rabbit. And um, we took, well, more precisely, I took the two girls to a... Um, the two museums in the city centre of Leicester, which is where we live. We went to the Newark Houses Museum and uh, at the moment they have a tiger who came to tea exhibit, which features some of the artwork from the book, a little bit of background story on the author Judith Kerr, um, and just play, play things for the younger children. It wasn't as big an exhibit as I expected. I know that in 2022 they did Peter Rabbit and that was a lovely long exhibit that went through, um, there was a trail for the children to follow as they went through the story. There wasn't any of this for this one but it was still a, a lovely little visit. We, all, we go there reg to that particular museum on a regular basis anyway. And also we went to the New Walk Museum, which is, um, it's still city centre, but it's a little walk out of the city centre. It's only about five minutes away from the main shopping areas. And they had Chinese New Year celebrations. We didn't get to see any of the performances because they were fully, um, re places had been reserved already for the times that we were likely to get to. So. We didn't get to do that but we did get to go around to the art and craft area and Catherine had to go at some calligraphy which she really enjoyed and they got a couple of little gifts given to them so yeah so that was this weekend last weekend what did we do last weekend I can't remember <laughs> I can't remember I think we were mostly um, just chilling last weekend I think I know I got 
um, a good amount of cross stitch done on my cross stitch day which was last Sunday but I won't be showing that this week because I don't think I've made enough progress to be noticeable from the last episode that I showed you so um, I'll only show that every now and then when there's some noticeable progress uh, so let's get on with my projects. So I've got no finished objects because, let's face it, <laughs> I'm all about the whips. <laughs> Me? Finish something? Uh, I do have something that's almost finished though and I'll do that one first and that is my amigurumi. So I have been working on that the last few days. This is actually my last day before I have a cross stitch day. Here is the project. Now, some of you um, might have already have seen this project because I have already made one of these elephants <coughs> and that was gifted to my manager at work. This is going to uh, another friend of mine at work who is also Hindu. So the pattern is a free pattern and of it's from craftpassion.com so just be able to spot it on the watermark there on the picture and it's amazing pattern it really is very thorough the photograph tutorials throughout are very clear uh, which is more than you would expect normally for a free pattern so um, I can only apologize to the designer <laughs> for my, my wonky attempts <laughs> so here it is now I do not know how the eyes ended up wonky you can't quite tell I don't know if it's the way I'm high but um, the eyes we've got one this eye is sitting higher than this eye now I don't know how that happened because I marked out exactly where the eyes were going when I put them in I didn't put backs on until I was sure they were straight so I don't know how that happened <laughs> absolutely no idea his mouth is also um, slightly wonky as well it's off to an angle so he's kind of going <laughs> um, the ears aren't bad <laughs> the ears aren't bad and neither are the arms but um, I still think he's cute. <laughs> I think I think my wonky <laughs> putting together of Amigurumi um, just adds charm. <laughs> so here he is. So um, he is made from predominantly Hayfield Spirit yarn. I do not know the name of the colourway. I believe the bull bands just had um, numbers on anyway. So the other one I made was in the one that's all sort of rainbowy coloured, rainbow coloured. And this one is um, obviously the greys and purples. The pink is a sparkly pink that I've had in my stash for a million years. Uh, I'm trying to use it up. <laughs> um, uh, I am going to be embracing as many scrappy projects as I can this year. I'm determined to not feel guilty when I buy yarn. So, um, yes, I have said it previously um, and I'll say it again. This is the year. I am going to try and concentrate on stash yarn. I have been marking um, projects out according to um, what I have in, on my shelves and trying to stick to that. I'm not saying I'm not buying any yarn because I can't I can't live to that kind of commitment I just can't um, I obviously have my monthly subscriptions from Attic Spin Dye which I believe the latest ones should be due very soon um, and I also um, ha I'm not going to restrict myself uh, if I need yarn for a particular project I will get it I'm not I'm just not I can't commit myself to saying no yarn purchases in 2023 because that's 
that's not who I am. <laughs> I am a yarn addict after all. So um, that's that. I am using a three millimeter hook. This is one of my Crochet Society hooks. Which I love these hooks. They, out of the boxes, these are probably the most used things that I got out of them. The yarn was okay, um, though for the price it was predominantly acrylic and predominantly um, yarn that I could probably have bought at a much cheaper price than what we were paying for the boxes, which is why I stopped subscribing quite a while ago. And I have not had any kind of jealousy at the boxes that have been released since, so I'm not all that bothered. But I do miss the regular hooks. I do love the hooks. They're um, sort of a resin, and they're just they're just nice. That they're actually quite a comfortable handle to, to have. I do have the clover and moors though, and they are also very very nice. So using that, this is what I have left from a full ball of yarn so far. I just have the legs to do. I'm not doing the tail because when I tried to do the tail on the last elephant, it was just an absolute unmitigated disaster. So I'm not even going to try this time. And um, here is, oh gosh, I've got ends. And here's the pink. Like I said, I've had this for so long. It hasn't had a ball band on it for a very long time. I think I made a baby cardigan out of it for Catherine at some point. So that's how old it is. I mean, Catherine's 13 this year. <laughs> so, so that's that project. It has been largely crochet projects, actually. Let's show you my new start. So um, Expression Fibre Arts, I discussed in my last episode that they had um, a new month by month knit along uh, for the knitting and they have started a month by month crochet along also. So I have started that, oh that's not the right bag, that's my knitting. So I've got this in my sloth bag that I got from Whiskef was it whisk I don't know but it was a lovely gift from them and this is also a little bit of incoming because <laughs> you know incoming um, so um, let's just show you the crochet first so this is apparently going to be a mandala style project small blanket so here is part one which is beautiful and it, this probably was about an hour's work I don't know how quickly they're going to continue working up as it gets bigger but um, I just think it's really pretty so I am trying to stick to the colours for this one as we all know <laughs> although for those of you who have seen previous episodes I gave up on last year's crochet along not because any problem with the pattern the pattern was enjoyable it was a very simple pattern to follow and it was looking like it would be nice but my color selection was awful it just did not look good so that stopped me wanting to work on it so this time I am buying the exact or as close to the exact colours as I can get to record what is recommended in the pattern. So Expression Fibre Arts is a US based company and they are releasing yarns for the knit along and the crochet along. So I will leave links below. Um, my budget would never go to 12 skeins of um, hand dyed yarn ordered from America because I'll have all those customs charges to hit so I'm not going to be buying the yarn but I did go to um, Hobbycraft 
and bought the yarn for the first three months based on the colours. Now, Hobbycraft have a great deal on a lot of their Women's Institute yarn. So this is the first colour. Um, they have three for two on a lot of their own brand yarn. And the Women's Institute is one of their own brand yarns. So I initially spotted the perfect yellow walking in. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, they haven't got the right colours. So then I found the right colours for January and March. However, on closer inspection, the perfect colours for January and March that I discovered were the homegrown. Now the homegrown is slightly more expensive than the acrylic because this is 100% British wool. And I don't do a whole bunch of crochet with wool. So I thought, now is the time to do that. So this colour is Plum. This is a DK weight yarn and it is 225 metres per ball. So there's the colour. It's really hard to show these sorts of colours. I think that's about true. That's the Plum anyway. So February is going to be this sort of a yellowy colour. So I've got this one, for, which is mustard. Again, all of the specs are the same. So all the Women's Institute homegrown. And then March is kind of like a dark turquoise colour, which I really found hard to re replicate. So this is the closest I could find. And this is petrol. So I haven't actually seen this yarn there before. I don't know if that means that this is new or if it's just new to the store. Um, obviously I've bought three months worth there. That will do me. And apparently, it doesn't matter that one month I've got all this left. Apparently some of the colours will be used again later on in the blanket. So um, it's possible I may need to upgrade my bag to one of my bigger bags a little bit further along as it goes but we shall see <laughs> and that um, incidentally that is the only incoming I have they have been good haven't I oh dear excuse me I had a rather large dinner and now I have the hiccups a little bit okay so that's that's my new start and I am I do enjoy the mandala style blankets the from the middle ones um, like this one was um, a from the middle blanket I, I, I can do rows and I like the ones that are sort of like sampler blankets I am starting to wonder what I should put down for my blanket along this year as my main blanket to work on I have a couple of blankets on the go already, so I should probably focus on finishing those before I start anything else. But I am hoping to get started on the uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas um, knitted blanket that they released last year. So I have the yarn for that now. Okay, next crochet project, my piece of cake cow. So this is living in a really cute little, this is a folding fold away shopping bag that I bought from Aldi for about 75p one pound a long time ago now I don't even think they do these bags anymore um, but this has tended to be the bag that I put my crochet now crochet alongs in <laughs> the last couple have been in here and this one is no different so this is the piece of cake cow it is designed by Tony Lipsy of um, TL Yarn Crafts and I've left my Kindle all the way over there and I can't be bothered to go get it so I couldn't tell you what part I'm on. Actually no I can. I can because I've been keeping track in my diary. So I got this for Christmas. It's a really pretty diary. I love diaries. Very pretty ones are almost my favourite. And I've been using it to keep a track of what I'm working on and 
things like that so aha uh -huh, part nine <laughs> so i've just been sort of making a note of the designer so obviously the the c in here in the gray section is is it a crochet or a knit day or cross stitch cs for cross stitch so then i've just been doing that and it's been working so far I did that for most of last year and um, but I feel it helped okay so yarn is largely the Aldi DK acrylic um, oh, oh I haven't got a full band left for these I'm hoping I don't have too much of this colour left to use to do because I think this is all I've got left. I need to dig, have a dig in my bag, but I think that's all I've got left of this colour. Eek! <laughs> so, um, now I have to remember, because I've got a couple of months worth of squares in here and I can't remember which month is which. No, that is all I've got left of that colour. Okay. <laughs> make it work I'll make it work so let's pull all of these up aha right okay yes yeah. so that and that and those go together where's the rest of those gone two three four ah there they are so these ones are last month's I can't remember if I showed them off uh and I can't remember the name of the stitches <laughs> this ones well no I know one I don't remember this one this one is quite obviously the star stitch which I actually enjoy doing it's I love the look of the star stitch um, it is a lovely and it doesn't make a bad fabric it's quite a dense fabric but it's still got some movement and drape to it so it doesn't go stiff um, with the denseness so yes yeah, so those are the four squares from last month so those are December's squares and January squares were all about the granny stitch so we had the granny stripe just straight granny rows there and the bias granny which worked up really quickly, very, very quickly. <laughs> Although I think I've got one side, this side's just a little bit tighter than the others. So I'm not quite sure what I've done there. Maybe my um, chains were just a little bit too tight. And there's the one in the dark purple. So that's all good, isn't it? So that is my piece of cake cow. I am using a four and a half mil hook. Although for some of them, I think I am using a four mil. Uh, depends on how loose the stitches are. I think I use a four and a half because I do tend to do my grannies a little tight. Um, I do get bored with granny stitches. I have to confess, I'm not a lover of the granny stitch. The bias I found interesting because I'm going up in a diagonal and then coming down in a diagonal. Uh, but the stripes, I'm glad, weren't too many rows because I was uh, I was starting to find it a little tedious. Oh no, hang on a sec. I just realised that doesn't belong in there. That belongs in the other one. <laughs> my my expression fibre arts blanket okay so that's those projects oh leery me so this is my last crochet project to show you I do apologise if it feels like I'm whizzing through these but I'm really conscious that it's 7.30 on a Monday evening and I need to get it done before Simon is down and I also need to get the washing up done from dinner so this project I haven't worked on in a little while actually 
so it was nice to get this out oh gosh some of the dies coming off onto my hook oh dear me okay so <laughs> this is my metamorphosis wrap which is a pattern from the sheepies yarn bookazine and it's the macro botanica issue as you can see there's a few patterns in here that i like the look of now let's i love this shawl I love this shawl. I want to make that shawl so, so much. Um. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Here it is, the metamorphosis wrap. So the idea is it can be worn a number of ways. So it has sleeves, so it's not just a plain triangular shawl. It has this beautiful centre panel. Now, it has been designed to be beaded, but I opted not to do the beads on this occasion. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you can wear it um, just all those different ways, <laughs> basically. I fully intend to wear it as an overtop, so I plan on putting a really pretty, uh, a, a plain long sleeves t-shirt on and then have that to wear over the top although i may have to wash it a few times <laughs> the designer is lynn Rowe, and i'm so close i'm so close <laughs> really close i can't wait to see this finish so i can start wearing it right okay now i need to work this one out that, that's the way so this is the way it's going, this, this is the diagonal, it's one, this is really hard to show because it's so fine and lacy. So that is, I have done the large for myself and it has these beautiful long, 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 really, really, really long wings in V-stitch. So it will just sort of go like that and the other side would go over and then you would use the ties to tie in various different ways so obviously I, I've got this panel done uh, which mirrors this one and I'm just working on the second wing and then it's just edging it it could be edging around the armholes and then a red edging around the entire thing and lots of heads to sew in so this is how far I am on the second wing so not a whole bunch done but it is really hard work because this is lace weight yarn and um, obviously it's a darker color so it's it's harder to see I have this much left from my first skein of yarn now this is yarn I bought how many years ago now 2019 I bought it four years ago now well almost four years ago so it was November 2019 it was my very first yarn show visit <laughs> so uh, this was when I was just blogging so I did used to blog um, but then I just didn't have time for lots of typing and working out it's much easier to just turn on the camera and chat for an hour than it is to um, type and to get the photography right and everything else um, so this is Hey J Yarn now she has stopped dyeing which I'm very sad about because I do love her yarn I didn't buy very much of it but I was certainly hoping to meet her at another yarn show and, and buy some more anyway this was in her bargain bucket actually it was £10 a skein and I bought two because I thought oh my goodness that's a bargain uh, so it's a 50% merino and 50% silk blend of lace yarn and I've got 800 metres on um, one skein and this is black current just look how beautiful those colours are so beautiful um, I do tend towards these sorts of colours more often than not um, but I'm so looking forward to wearing this 
Catherine's a little jealous that um, I'm, I made it for me and not her. I won't be making another one. <laughs> I've, made, I've made it very clear to her that I love her dearly, but I won't be making another one of these just so she can have one. And um, while I remember, this is living in my Emma Ball bag. I love this bag so much. <laughs> this one was bought from, I think I bought it from the Crafty Bird store in a Bakewell 21. Might have been Bakewell 21 because I've been to 2022. Yeah, so this was Bakewell 21. I do love the Bakewell show so so much it not just because it's probably one of the nearest ones to me it only takes about an hour to get there um, but I love Bakewell it's such a beautiful little town so we always go to the yarn show I spend three or four hours walking around not that big a yarn show if I'm honest it is plenty of stores there to keep everybody occupied and busy it's a beautiful yarn show and um, obviously you get to speak to all the, my favourite thing about yarn shows is you get to speak to the dyers you get to speak to the makers the creators and um, get to know them and sometimes get to know what makes them tick and that's what I love um, my husband Simon is always telling me I should get business cards made and I hand them out and see if I can get people more people watching my channel <laughs> I keep telling him that's not what I'm doing this for um, I know some people do it for the numbers so that they can get, I thought somebody was coming through the living room door then, um, so that they can monetize and uh, make money from their channel. If ever, pipe dreams, if ever I get to those sorts of numbers, I don't even know if I want to monetize because that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to just share the love. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> share the love of yarn. Um, um, share the love of yarn dyes. So, I mean, if you have special favourite yarn dyes, by all means, send me a message. Um, email me. My All my contact details are below. Uh, I am on social media. I'm, I am on um, Instagram. <laughs> That's where, that's where I am. I am Crochet Moments on Instagram. So you can always DM me on there and maybe link me through to a yarn dyer and I might try them out because I'm always looking for more dyers to support in their um, in their businesses. It's, it's a hard time out there, especially for smaller businesses. And I want to give my money to people who um, maybe need it a little more than some of the larger companies. So that's that. Anyway, <laughs> my last project, oh, I'm whizzing through. <laughs> I did promise Simon I was gonna have be minimal editing. It's just the bits where I'm stopping the camera and turn it back on again. And that's it. The, so um, I do apologise if I'm not sticking extra info around me. <laughs> I will try and remind him to do the um, links below. We I do try to do chapter links as well, but I don't know whether or not that will get done with this episode. Anyway, on to my adventure, which is plodding along. I am down. I've got three three left three so I will be working on this again later on in the week and it's my weekend project so I could get at least one more mini skein in at least on top of this one so this is the one I'm on at the moment so this is the Rosie's Moments um, advent I bought the 12 traditions of Christmas so in that advent, I, I got 24 envelopes, but there were only 12 mini skeins of yarn. So there was a mini skein on each odd numbered day of December. And in between there were little, little treats. So the, I got some of those knitting cords. I've got 
um, a really cool looking darning needle just really really nice little bits and pieces that are knitting related largely and um, along with it came a pattern so let's show off how much I've got if it oh gosh the wrap is tangled in the yarn and I'm dropping needles let's try and put that more centrally oh gosh okay so this is the most recent stripe that I'm on here so um, here it is this is knit on the bias it's getting really long Ooh. I have decided I might just make um, at the weekend I might just make one big magic knot ball from the last three I'll start from the latest one on my ball winder and then at the next one and add the next one and then I'll just work until it's all gone that, that to me sounds like more of <laughs> a chance of me making some progress um, but I'm not sure so here it is in all its glory and I am loving it and I can't wait to wear it because it's so beautiful so I did just think of one little tiny bit of incoming to show you um, but it didn't cost me any money <laughs> so I'm just going to pause the video and get it so that I can show you because I was so excited when I got it I managed to take yarn with me as I went right let's pop ah! just not going in the bag there we go right so this was something coming how lovely is this well I think that might be the wrong side because we've got N sewn in there we go oh, I think there might be some N sewn in that side as well this is a beautiful scarf that was knitted to for me by a friend <laughs> This is, I do not know what the yarn is. She is coming back to me when she's found the ball band for it because I want some more of this, some of this yarn. I'm not sure if it might be the Hayfield Spirit actually, looking at the colours and how soft the yarn is. So, um, I obviously some of you might remember, uh, I've said it a few times, I am a brownie, le brownie leader and uh, one of the brownie leader friends called, uh, we call her Wise Owl. <laughs> uh, she has started to venture into knitting as a way of cutting back on how much she's smoking, especially now she's semi retired. So um, she's made all of us a scarf, and this is the one that she made for me. She made an identical one for another one of the leaders uh, who also does the rainbows. So as well as brownies, I do the rainbows who are small, <laughs> small brownies. <laughs> so the rainbows are aged four to seven and the brownies are aged seven to ten. And then they go into girl guides, but I haven't been roped into doing that yet. <laughs> so I'm going to stick with rainbows and brownies. So, um, yes, yeah, so she brought me and the other rainbow leader one of these that she made and she's made a couple of blankets for people and it's just from um, mostly yarn that she's gifted she gets gifted a lot of yarn as part of um, donations for the brownies and there are only so many things we can do with yarn because it's really hard to find bulk um, orders of knitting needles cheap <laughs> So um, again, any suggestions, let me know. Because there are a couple of brownies who are interested in learning to knit. So it would be nice um, if they had some needles. But obviously we, it has to be cheap. <laughs> because we, we are um, a very, very small, low-funded group. So that is everything I have to show. Um, it's... I do feel like I've just whizzed through everything <laughs> but um, I'll um, as a consequence of me not planning things properly and not getting thing getting the high episode recorded on a Friday night so I'm hoping that this goes out 
tomorrow at some point, which is Tuesday. I, I am going to instruct Simon it doesn't really need editing, just stick the end bits together and put it out there. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, so I think that's about it. So I'll better get Simon to come and take some photos of some of these for my thumbnail because he likes to faff around with photos. <laughs> Sorry Simon I said that. Um, I'm really hoping that the next couple of weeks aren't as stressful for me at work but I'm hoping that everybody has plenty of time to craft and who, who knows for me crafting is my stress relief so I'm going to go and do the washing up and then I'm going to get on with some amigurumi maybe even see if I can get him finished tonight who knows <laughs> so I'll see you all in a couple of weeks bye bye